Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze the main tactical issue Arsenal experienced in their 3-1 loss at Old Trafford. So in today's video, first we're going to focus on Arsenal's pressing issues, then we'll shift to the minor adjustments that Ten Hag made in the second half, and then lastly we'll focus on the transitional attacks that carved open Arsenal's backline. So when we break it all down and we do look at the board, we have both sides starting in a 4-2-3-1. Therefore, when we analyze how they both look to press, one would assume that they would press similarly. Similarly. However, when we focus on United, they were looking to push forward with their front five, and they had Rashford sitting just ahead of Ramsdale to ensure that he couldn't freely play balls out of the back. That's saw Anthony and Sancho stepping from the wide areas in towards the center backs, but blocking off the passing lane in towards Zinchenko and White. That often does leave an outlet for Ramsdale to play balls over the top in towards the fullbacks, and that would require Anthony and Sancho to track back to close down the fullbacks, and if that wasn't the case, case it would require the United fullbacks to step forward and have the center backs coming across to close down the spare wide player in Martinelli or Saka because in that midfield zone Bruno was tracking the movement of Lakonga and McTominay was stepping forward to close down Jaka while Eriksen was tracking the movement of Odegaard. There were the rare occasions where you had Bruno stepping forward and leading the press and then Rashford dropping off on Lakonga and the one real worry that United may have had here prior to kickoff was the movement of Zinchenko as this season we've witnessed the left back drifting into central positions and then swapping with Jaka who would move in towards that inside left area. But in those situations, if Anthony and McTominay weren't swapping off their man and Jaka wasn't dropping off into that position initially, then you'd see Anthony tucking in towards that midfield zone, stepping towards Zinchenko, and that would simply clear out a passing lane for Martinelli, but that didn't harm United's backline on a consistent basis. They were more worried about ensuring that Zinchenko could and get on the ball freely and that's where you ended up seeing Anthony shifting in towards that midfield zone picking up Zinchenko and then from there if Xhaka did get on the ball McTominay could push out or you could simply have Anthony shifting across and McTominay pushing towards Zinchenko to close down that lane and then if United weren't pressing high from the front they would drop off into two banks of four with Rashford and Bruno in between Lakonga with Rashford applying pressure towards the center backs if need be and then Bruno sitting on Lakonga while you had the midfield battle intact with the McTominay against Xhaka and Odegaard against Eriksen. Therefore, when you shift to Arsenal, there was no real surprise in how they pressed. It's been a similar pattern throughout this season where they have Gabriel Jesus stepping to the ball carrier and then the wide player stepping to the free man to close him down and block off the passing lane in towards the fullback. So if Gabriel Jesus was stepping towards Varane, you'd see Saka stepping towards Lissandro and vice versa if Jesus moved over to Lissandro. Then you'd have Martinelli stepping towards Varane and then that would require Zinchenko to push forward to close down Delo. It was clear that Arsenal didn't want United to build from goal kicks. So whenever De Gea was placed in that position, you'd see Gabriel Jesus and Martinelli closing down the center backs, Saka sitting on the left back, and Odegaard stepping towards McTominay, which eventually forced United to punt the ball in towards Arsenal's half. Therefore, when they dropped off into more of a reserved shape, you'd end up seeing Arsenal maintain their midfield battles. So it'd be Odegaard stepping towards Eriksen, McTominay against Xhaka and Lokonga tracking the movement of Bruno unless he pushed forward to occupy one of the center backs. Out in the wider areas, Anthony was often hugging the touchline, but similar to Sancho, there were times where he moved infield, allowed Dalo to push forward, and then would be looking to make runs in beyond Zinchenko. Whereas the same thing applied on the opposite flank, where times Sancho was occupying white and checking in towards the ball, and then you'd see Malasia pushing forward to try and peg back Saka, and then you could see Ericsson drop dropping off in towards an inside left position to pick up the ball. There was one example in particular where you ended up seeing White having to hold his position due to the left back pushing beyond Saka, but that was down to Saka stepping towards Eriksen dropping off in towards that zone, and Lakonga was forced to shift across to deal with Sancho. But outside of the varied movement out in the wider areas, Arsenal's biggest issue specifically in that opening half was the manner in which they pressed, and it often led with Odegaard being aggressive and stepping towards the center back and not doing a good job of blocking off the passing lane in towards Eriksen. In that situation, if Odegaard does step towards Lissandro and Eriksen's passing lane isn't blocked off, then Lakonga has to step forward immediately and that leaves Bruno free in a pocket of space between the lines. In many cases, Xhaka cancels out McTominay, Odegaard has the work rate and the discipline to track the movement of Eriksen, and then Lakonga is simply responsible for shielding the back four to ensure that Rashford or Bruno or even Sancho, who was tucking into 
central areas, couldn't get on the ball freely, if the midfield shuttlers were bypassed. Ultimately, there isn't an issue with Udegaard stepping aggressively towards Lissandro if he's blocking off the passing lane or forcing him back, but if he is bypassed, then you need Lukonga tight on Ericsson, with McTominay still being closed by Xhaka, and Arsenal should be okay because then you have the center backs in a 2v2 with Bruno and Rashford, and they simply have to close them down in that regard. However, the reoccurring issues that Arsenal encountered with their pressing in that opening half was that Odegaard was stepping towards Lissandro. Neither Xhaka or Lukonga were stepping towards the spare man to close him down quick enough. And then you'd witness Rashford or Bruno dropping off in towards that midfield zone to serve as a passing outlet. And from there, they were able to combine with the spare midfielder and then break forward to pull out desperate Arsenal players looking to cover for their teammates. So in this example, you witness Lissandro pulling out Odegaard and focus on McTominay who's left free dropping into that midfield zone. Xhaka doesn't step and that forces Jesus to come across when Odegaard is bypassed but McTominay does well to spin away from that pressure and now focus on the space he has and Rashford. You can see Xhaka holds on Bruno but now Rashford freely dropping in to check in towards the ball as Lukonga and Xhaka are pulled out of the game and Rashford is able to get the ball from McTominay around Jesus and he drops the ball back into the path of McTominay and again when McTominay pulls out Jesus no one stepping towards Rashford and that allows Rashford to receive the ball in that midfield zone and by the time Arsenal pressure is stepping towards him he's capable of sliding the play out towards Antony to place him in a 1v1 against Zinchenko. The build-up to United's opener stems with Odegaard stepping towards Lissandro and blocking off the passing lane to Eriksen but focus on Lukonga and Xhaka's positioning. When Lissandro plays the ball out towards Malasia you could see that neither of those Arsenal players step to Eriksen and now now he's free to get on the ball and by the time Lukonga recovers, you could see that Xhaka is taken out of the game by McTominay and Eriksen can now play the ball into Bruno who's free in the halfway circle as the center backs don't step. This results in Bruno carrying the ball forward and Gabriel now making a lunging tackle and Bruno gets it out into the path of his teammate Sancho before Gabriel takes him out of the game and now you have a 3v3. Sancho carries the ball central and you see Rashford's movement pulling away the center back and focus on Anthony calling for the ball. Rashford receives the ball, pulls out Zinchenko and Gabriel, and now because of that disjointed pressing, Antony's free to receive the ball in right half space because Zinchenko overcommits and doesn't block the pass, and this places Antony in a position to put United up 1-0. Therefore, when we shift to the issue that Arsenal encountered in the second half, it was odd because they were arguably the better side in the opening 15 minutes. You saw more of Zinchenko tucking in towards that midfield zone to get on the ball and forming more of a 3-2-5. But what we initially saw from Ten Hag was that he replaced Anthony for Ronaldo and pushed Rashford out into the wider areas. Now United have a direct threat that's looking to break in behind and stretch the back line to create more space in that midfield zone. And that was a threat that Arsenal had to deal with. Alongside with that, he eventually brought on Fred to provide more energy in that midfield zone, and then he shifted out Bruno out and towards the wider areas as well. The reason why this was key was that when Arsenal were losing possession in the final third, now you ended up seeing United playing balls immediately out and towards the wide areas. One, because you have Zinchenko caught in towards that central area, and even if Jacques is dropping off into that zone, Bruno could play balls around him, or you're simply having Rashford break beyond. Him. It's also due to the fact that Martinelli and Saka are high and now you can look to bypass that Arsenal high line and get runners in behind with Rashford's pace proving crucial. So the common theme in that second half was that Arsenal were one losing the ball in their own third and then they struggled to counter press to close down the United player that won the ball and it was either Eriksen, Bruno or Rashford breaking out in towards those wider areas and it was Bruno and Eriksen using their passing to play balls in behind for Rashford running into the gaps between the fullbacks and the center backs and we also witnessed Ericsson making free runs from those deeper midfield zones to join the attack. Following Lukonga losing the ball in the midfield zone you could see that United recover through Dalo and focus on the positioning of Ericsson and Bruno. No Arsenal players within close proximity and by the time Udegaard steps Ericsson anticipates that pressure plays a first time pass into Bruno beyond the Arsenal midfield and now focus on Rashford. He anticipates that there is 
space to run into beyond White. Bruno quickly receives the ball, scans the pitch, and plays it in between the center backs for Rashford to run into space beyond White, placing him in this position where he could break in towards the box in a 1v1. And even though White does make a desperate lunging tackle, Rashford finishes coolly. And in the build-up to United's third goal, you could see Ronaldo's now being closed down by four Arsenal players, but focus on Ericsson's movement. Ronaldo's passing towards him is poor, but he's still capable of getting the ball freely and sliding it out to Bruno. When he slides it into the path of Bruno, you have Ericsson and Rashford looking to make free runs into space. Bruno anticipates that movement and that no one's tracking Ericsson, and he plays the ball around the defense into ample space for Ericsson to break free on goal. White is not going to catch Rashford, and now Ericsson's capable of carrying it in towards the penalty area and sliding it across goal to place Rashford in a position where he could tap it in from point blank range and kill off the game. So as you can see, although Mikel Arteta's man conceded minimal chance and were arguably the better side for certain spells of this game. The hosts utilized their speed to exploit Arsenal's pressing lapses and transitional breakdowns to claim all three points.